In the past, I've had to deal with ISPs blocking certain ports, and in some cases, most usable incoming ports. So I wanted to make a video showing you guys how to bypass this using WireGuard and a VPS. So that way you can start self-hosting your services, even if your ISP doesn't want you to. For this demo, I'm going to be using a DigitalOcean VPS. I'll leave referral codes in the description so you guys can get some free credit for either DigitalOcean or Linode. I won't make any money off these links, but it'll give me credit towards more server time. So I can make some more cool videos like this one, and it'll give you guys some free credit that you can use for hosting this. I'm going to be using their smallest VPS, and I can't see any reason to recommend anything higher than that personally. We're going to start by installing WireGuard on both our VPS and a local server in order to configure port forwarding. I'd recommend having the local server be the one running your reverse proxy. In my case, I'll be forwarding Nginx Proxy Manager. So that way we can access all of our internal services externally through the VPS using this reverse proxy. So we're going to click on create and then droplets. And we're going to pick the latest Ubuntu LTS. Make sure we come over here and pick the smallest droplet that they have available. Uh, choose the region that is closest to you. I'm going to be using an SSH key to connect, uh, and I definitely recommend that you do as well. If you need help doing that, let me know, and I'll make sure I do a video on creating an SSH key. And we're going to post in a descriptive host name here. It's uh, WireGuard Ubuntu 20.04 external. Uh, and you can enable backups if you want to. I definitely recommend it if you're going to be relying on this droplet for all of your port forwarding. So go ahead and click on Create Droplet, and we should be good to go as soon as this loading bar is finished. All right, so I have a domain here that I'm going to set up before we do the WireGuard installation and configuration. And I'm just gonna point this at that VPS that I just created. That way we can have all of our port forwarding and everything for that domain go through our VPS and into our local network. All right, now that that's done, we'll go ahead and SSH into the server. So on the left side here, we've connected to the DigitalOcean droplet that we just created. And on the right side, I'm connected to the local server that I want to have connected and do all of the port forwarding through. I have them both up next to each other because we're going to be repeating a lot of the same steps on both of them. So the first thing we're going to do is get all the packages on both of these systems updated. Now that everything is up to date, we're going to be installing software-properties-common on both of these servers. And this is just going to let us add the repository for WireGuard, which is just going to be a sudo uh, apt-add-repository ppa colon WireGuard slash WireGuard on both of the servers. And make sure you hit enter for both of them. And then once we're done with that, we're just going to do another update. And then we are going to sudo apt install WireGuard on both of the servers. All right, and now that we have WireGuard installed, we can use the WG utility to generate some keys. So first off, I'm going to paste this uh, umask command. And what this is going to do is it's going to set the default permissions for new files that we generate. And then I'm going to paste this nice one-liner to generate both your public and private keys on both of these servers. And then it will echo the public key. So save both of these for later. And we're going to go ahead and configure our WireGuard interface on both of these servers. You can see it's already pasted our private key in here. So on the VPS, we're just going to configure the listen port as well as the address that we're going to be using within our VPN for that server. 
and then we're going to define the peer that it's going to be connecting to. So this is going to be using the public key for our local server to connect to it and basically use that for authentication. And then on our home server, we need to define just our address. And then we also need to define our peer, which is going to be the cloud server. And so here we have the endpoint IP is not going to be that. It's going to be the IP address of our DigitalOcean droplet. So we'll just hop back over here to our droplets and copy that IP address. And make sure the port over here matches the listen port on your server. This persistent keep alive is just something to keep the tunnel alive. It'll send a packet every 25 seconds here to make sure that that tunnel stays open even if there's no traffic going through it. And then we're going to control O and enter. And control O and enter to save both of those files. And then we can control X to exit both of them. And that is pretty much it for the wire guard side of the configuration. Let me just clear these terminals here. Before we set up IP tables to port forward, we're gonna to need to make a few changes. Uh, we're going to need to edit this slash etsy slash sysctl config file. And we need to come down here to this inet dot ipv4 dot ip underscore forward equals one and delete that uh, hashtag that's commenting it out and then control x to go back and we will run sudo sysctl dash p and then sudo sysctl dash dash system to enable these So now that we have WireGuard configured on both of these servers, we're going to start up our tunnel. And then we're going to enable that tunnel so it starts every time we boot. And these are just uh, system CTL commands. I'll have links in the description to the blog where I have a write-up on this, and that will include all of the commands as well. So once we've enabled this, we're going to ping the addresses that we had set earlier. So from our local server, we're going to ping 192.168.4.1, and we see we're getting a response. This is the uh, public server that we have set up that's responding. So that's how we know this WireGuard connection is working correctly. You can do the same thing from the WireGuard server, where you can ping uh, 192.168.4.2, and that should ping our local server, which is perfect. So we have them responding from both ends, and we can get into the port forwarding section of this. So we're going to be setting this up using IP tables, which is going to be a little bit more complicated than like a router's web interface. Uh, but luckily, I have all of the commands that you need here for getting this set up. So we're going to be setting up all of these port forward rules on our public server for our VPS. So we're just creating a new chain here called forward. And the initial rule is going to be a drop. So we're not allowing any traffic to come in through that. And we're going to be whitelisting essentially ports that we let in through this chain. So we're going to be allowing port 80 on ETH0, which is our network interface here. We type in IPA, you can see ETH0 is our network interface with our public IP attached to it. And we're going to be allowing port 443 as well. And then we're going to pop these two other rules in here. And these are basically going to allow established um, connections to remain active. 
and then we are going to add a rule that changes the destination address to the IP of our home server for those specific ports. So here we have port 80 is forwarding to our destination address of 192.168.4.2. And we have port 443 forwarding to our destination address of 192.168.4.2. And now we need to add some rules that allow the home server to send traffic back out through our VPN to those clients. So that's going to be this IP tables uh, command here. And it's going to be for port 80 as well as for port 443. And that should be all that we need to get our port forwarding set up. And what we're going to want to do now is test this out. So if you remember back to earlier in the video where I had set up this streambands.live domain to point to our Nginx reverse proxy manager over here, I went ahead and set up a proxy host where the root um, domain name will forward to Portainer. Uh, it says status unknown, but I'm sure I'm unsure why it's doing that. Uh, we can go ahead and get a new SSL certificate and get all this stuff set up here. I'll be going over setting up Nginx Proxy Manager in another video. Now you can see that we are online. So if we go to streambands.live, we see our Portainer instance, and we are able to log in and all of our port forwarding is pretty much done and we're ready to go now in the future if you want to forward some non-standard ports all you're going to need to do is take this uh, IP tables command here that we have uh, let me paste it in for you just need this command as well as the pre routing and post routing commands that I had put in earlier. And you're just going to change the ports on these to be the, uh, the port that you want to forward. Make sure that they're all the same port. And you should be good to go. One other thing I'm going to show you how to do is save these firewall rules so that they're persistent. So we're going to install netfilter-persistence. And then we are going to run sudo netfilter-persistent space save. And then we are going to use systemctl to enable this service. So that way it'll input those as soon as we start up the system. We're also going to need to install IP tables-persistent. And you'll click yes to save your current rules. And you can see that these are saved in cat uh, slash epsi ip tables slash ip um, slash rules dash dot v uh, four is where these are going to be. So you can come in here and you can manually modify these so that they're the ports and whatnot that you want to have configured. As you can see, there's some duplicates here. Um, from when I copied and pasted those commands again to show you what they were. But that pretty much wraps this video up. If you guys have any questions about this or need any help getting stuff set up, make sure to comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. In the meantime, make sure to like and subscribe and post recommendations for other cool tips and tricks that you want to get set up. I'm going to be trying to make home lab tips a weekly video that I do on Mondays so that way on Mondays you'll get these home lab tips and on Fridays we'll be going through my series of setting up your home lab from scratch and I wanted to thank the r slash self hosted community for being very supportive and giving some good feedback on my first video